Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Oskar Sjögren. I'm working for Avient since nine years now, and I'm in front of you today in the role of team lead of engineering in Avient Design. With me today, I have Edward Fulchan, who is a design engineer in my team, and it's Edward who will be taking you through the technical aspects of this presentation. We have chosen today to present a topic that we are facing more and more in our daily work. And that is the simulation of heat transfer in lighting systems. For this purpose, we are leveraging MSC Cradle in order to reduce the number of assumptions we are making in these types of evaluations. In today's presentation, we will briefly introduce the company to give a bit more context on what we do, and especially what we do in our team, Avient Design. We will then dig into the thermal management case study, starting with the stakes of the market, an introduction to thermally conductive plastics, and the evaluation of the application we have prepared. Now, first about Avient. Avient is a multinational company with more than 8,000 employees worldwide and more than 35,000 material solutions. In 2020, we realized $3.8 billion in sales in our 115 establishments located in more than 35 countries around the world. Some people may know us by one of our old names, such as Poly1 or Clariant Master Batches. This is now Avient uh, when we are working together. In short, we are compounders. In other words, the vocation of the company is to make uh, unfilled plastics functionalized with different types of additives and reinforcements to meet the requirements of our customers. On the left in this slide, we have represented the colors, additives and ink business unit. The technical function here is typically the appearance of the product through color and also effect but also different uh, additivation uh, technologies to achieve UV resistance, oxygen scavenging, or barrier functions. On the right, we see our distribution business unit. This unit helps customers to efficiently source the correct material for their application to achieve the final product quality. And in the middle, you will find the engineered polymer formulations, as this is where we will find our thermally conductive plastics, but also other examples of functionalized solutions, such as mechanically reinforced solutions with short, long, or continuous fibers, densified materials, allowing for sound and even X-ray insulation, as well as elastomers with impact absorption or vibration dampening performances. The team that Edward and I are part of is called Avian Design. This is a group of experienced industrial designers and design engineers. Our mission is to support Avian customers disregarding the business unit with their product development. Our service will, in this process, use virtual prototypes or simulations to find the best combination of design, material and process to meet the technical specifications. Now, coming back to the topic of the day, recent studies have shown that thermally conductive plastics uh, have all, uh, does already play and will play an even more essential role in the development of lighting systems. According to a study published on UL Prospector, the market for thermally conductive plastics in automotive LED applications is forecast to reach $260 million by 2025. Another market where the stakes are high is that of street lighting. Within 10 years, more than 8 billion euros will, are expected to be invested. By 2029, it is said that 90% of street lights are planned to be equipped with LEDs. Now, I will now leave the word to Edward to present the technical aspects of the case study itself. Edward? Thank you, Oscar. So maybe some of you have always been told that to dissipate the heat, it is mandatory to use uh, metallic heat sinks, but I can assure you that uh, with the well-adapted design, uh, thermally conductive plastics, TCPs, can do the job and can offer many advantages uh, in terms of design flexibility, weight and cost, uh, despite the fact that their thermal conductivity is significant, significantly lower than uh, aluminum. So you can see on the slide uh, a simplified illustrations of thermal conductivity orders of magnitudes for several uh, material solutions. 
And you can see that while the aluminum is around 150, 200 watt uh, per meter Kelvin, uh, TCPs are rather between 15 and 20, which is 10 times less conductive than the aluminum. However, uh, a standard plastic has a conductivity below one, so 10 times less conductive than our technical plastic solution. We'll therefore see in our study how to achieve the performance of an aluminum heat sink with a thermally conductive plastic. To illustrate that, we took the case of a street lamp that we recently worked on and for which we were asked to replace the aluminum heat sink with a TCP solution. Of course, it is never only about the heat dissipations, the rest of the application specifications must also be met. So having a good resistance to external conditions like the UV, the weather conditions, um, having a good reduction in mass of the assembly is also one of the main requests of our customers. Obviously, a reduction of the cost of the applications is uh, always well appreciated by the customers. And finally, uh, enough flexibility in the design to integrate specific function like um, uh, 5G antennas, for example. So today we will focus on the heat dissipations part. Uh, it should be noted that uh, thermal management can be critical for uh, lamps that are equipped with LEDs, uh, which must not heat up too much at the risk of malfunctioning. So in today's case study, the goal is to avoid reaching a critical maximum temperature of 110 degrees C. Um, just a quick reminder about uh, thermal management. Uh, there are three phenomena to transfer the heat. Uh, the first one would be the radiation. Uh, so you can imagine your old student old, old plate uh, blushing and the, the heat that emanates from, from it. Um, then you have the conduction, uh, which is a phenomena of transfer between solids. Uh, in these examples, you can take the, the, the plate from the pot or the, the heat dissipating into the pot. Um, this is actually where the thermal conductivity we talked about before uh, comes into play. So the higher the conductivity is, the more easily the heat will pass through the, the solid. And finally, we have um, the convection. So this time it's between a solid and a fluid or between the fluid itself. Um, and uh, this is the in this example the the heat that is, comes from the pot to to the weather to the to the water, or to the surrounding air uh, of uh, of the the pot. So in the case of the TCP, uh, which has a thermal conductivity which is much lower than the aluminum, it is necessary to have uh, the two other phenomena that counterbalance uh, the 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 lower conductivity. So we'll mainly play uh, with the convection uh, to have a good dissipation of the heat. And this requires uh, to have an adapted design with the maximized ex uh, exchange surface to maximize the, the convection. So this is the original designs we had from the customer, the one with uh, the aluminum pit sink that is located just above the leads. Uh, so this was our uh, starting point. From this metallic insink, we applied a certain uh, number of design rules, like for example, the heat sinks fins being close to the heat source. Um, some um, knowledge we have about the thickness and spacing of the of the fins. Uh, as well, we try to put the PCB in direct contact with the, the heat sink, uh, with the thermally conductive plastic heat sink. And um, we had some other requirements uh, like the external surfaces needed to, to have a uh, lower amount of um, sharp edges, uh, sharp angles to avoid any dust getting stuck in, in, in the, the final application. So our team, uh, based of uh, our experience and uh, those rules, was able to uh, develop several concepts uh, that will uh, presented to the to the customer, and the customer validate that those concepts um, were um, in agreement with the, all the specifications he had, and we started to to work on uh, uh, a CAD model, um, designing CAD model, and creating uh, what you will see on the screen here, um, a new design with TCP, uh, and as mentioned before, this design has been created in order to maximize the, the convection. So thanks to the, the fins you can see surrounding the heat source, 
um, we can dissipate better the heat uh, through convection. Let's move on to um, the evaluations of the thermal performance of these geometries and uh, to the part concerning our digital tools. So to perform those uh, simulations, we use MSC Cradle. Uh, so it's a computational free dynamic code, CFD code to simulate the heat transfer or uh, the heat dissipations uh, from a heat source. In our case, the heat source are the LEDs and we are trying to um, have the same performance of uh, as a, an aluminum heatsink. So um, the aim of this evaluation is to verify that our design material combinations allow the LEDs, the LEDs, to cool sufficiently to prevent uh, to prevent them from malfunctioning. So why are we using CFD calculations? Uh, quite simply, because as we said previously, convection is a key criterion and how to better capture this phenomenon than by simulating the fluid uh, surrounding the lamp. The choice and even the, the need uh, to uh, have a CFD calculations is to correctly predict the fluid behavior and uh, that allows us to make uh, a fewer assumptions or a few assumptions as possible in our heat transfer simulations and therefore to be um, more precise. So for these evaluations, we need to define um, the material solutions in our assembly and their properties. Um, we have a database which is integrated into Cradle that helps to define uh, standard materials such as the, the polycarbonate for the glass or even the aluminum for the metal heat sink is in, to, inside the, the database. Um, we also use this database to create our multi-layer PCB. And finally, uh, we can also create the missing materials with the properties of our materials. So to summarize the case study, depending on the simulated case, the heat sink will be made of aluminum, of thermatec, or in standard plastic. Our evaluation will uh, be a comparison of the performance of the two different designs we mentioned before in combination with those different material solutions. Um, in terms of load and boundary conditions, uh, we are in a natural convection case. Uh, its source power is defined uh, into the, the LED. Uh, so uh, we have one uh, watt per LED. We have 40 LED in total. So that's 40 watt as a heat source. And um, just uh, a, a quick note here, we use the uh, natural convection and we use the integrated wizard that are uh, inside Cradle that helps you to uh, get started and to define the surrounding conditions of the, the fluid domain. Uh, finally, the data that interests us here is the maximum temperature close to the LEDs. And uh, we need, again, to validate that we respect uh, the operating temperatures of the LEDs. So let's go into the results. And if we first take our reference, so that's the original uh, metal designs using aluminum heat sink, we reach a temperature of 100 degrees C, which respects uh, the 110 degrees C limit set by the specification. If we use the same heat sink design, but this time we use a standard plastic, the temperature, the maximum temperature, reach um, up to 250 degrees C, so this is not acceptable. Um, we cannot use a standard plastic to dissipate the heat. And finally, if we do use the same design again, but uh, replace the aluminum with a TCP, uh, we can reach um, 150 degrees C, which is still uh, excessive and do not comply with the specification. So we need to play with the design. So we can now use the plastic design, uh, which is optimized for uh, the convection and from that, we can reach a maximum temperature 102 degrees C, very close to what we get with the original metallic version of the assembly, and we are on the specification. If we use a standard plastic with uh, the optimized plastic design, uh, we still have a very high temperature. So this is really the combination of the design and the material solutions that helps to obtain um, the same performance as we have for the uh, original aluminum design.
the results that we found uh, with the MSC Cradle were validated by real physical tests. And uh, with those tests, the difference of uh, four degrees C between the simulations and the real test proved us that our numerical model were uh, predictive. This does not just mean that um, we have done a good job and our digital tool is uh, performing well. It is also mean that uh, if I look to my predictive model, I have a real digital twin of the test in my hand and I can change anything in a digital model. I expect it to, uh, to be reflected similarly into my actual prototype to the real part. So thanks to that numerical twin, I can avoid production of prototypes, I can test things easily, I can make modifications to the, to the model, I can have a, a quick response of the impact of those change. And this eventually facilitate the innovation, but also clearly speed up the development times of uh, the lamp I want to create. I will now leave the word to Oscar to uh, conclude the, this presentation. Thank you, Edward. As a summary of what we have seen today, we can say that with the use of digital tools, highly functionalized material solutions, and the service capabilities of Aviant, we can help our customers on their path to their digital transformation. This, in the end, allows for a quicker development process with high confidence rate before manufacturing a physical part to reach an overall lower cost for the product development. We would like to thank you today for the time allotted to us, and we are open to answer any questions that might have um, come from uh, this presentation. Thank you very much.